Hey guys, it's Paul and we have a delivery. The Folertech FT5 printer has showed up. We're going to do an unboxing video. Welcome to When Nerdy is Cool. Da, da, da. As you can see, the box is pretty intact. I am in Maine, they are in New Hampshire, so UPS didn't have a lot of time to kill it. But what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy opened up. We'll do some inventory. This way, those of you who have just ordered your printers know what to expect. All right, well, all kinds of packing. Very well packed. My microphone's making a real fun time of this. Mmm, smells like fresh laser cutting. All right. There's the first half. Throw that on the floor. The cat will enjoy that. All right, we have a nice inventory sheet. One of the uh, the add-ons that I purchased was the uh, the glass plate. Looks like that has been tucked in here for safety. But this is the heated bed up top. Let's just it gently. Yep. There's the glass. There's our heated bed. There's part number one. Got a whole inventory sheet here that we can go through. I want to be very careful with this. Laser cut parts. Now, these are um, made of, I can't think of the name of the material they use, but it's essentially a very similar to a pressure board. So uh, if you bought a cheap entertainment center years ago, <laughs> you may have some deja vu coming up. Uh, I'm not going to unpackage these right now because I know that they use an oil to uh, do the laser cut and I don't want to get that stuff all over me. <laughs> so let's move on to the next layer inside the box. Okay, I once again buried the cat in more cardboard. And we have, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, they've made very good use of the uh, plastic bags and, and everything else here. And, oh, stop the presses. We got candy. <laughs> it seems like, uh, it seems to be a thing with 3D printing. Uh, if you buy a printer or if you buy spools of filament, most of these manufacturers, you know, throw a bag of candy in there as well. So it doesn't speak to the healthiness of our hobby, but... But look at this. We have wires and wires and wires sitting here. And it looks like they've done a pretty decent job of, uh, I don't want to say it's exactly a wiring harness, but it doesn't look as scary as I expected. So I'll place that there. Most everything else seems to be pretty well sealed up. We have a, a small sample of uh, the filament. Unlike my Ultimakers, which uses 2.85, slash three millimeter. Uh, these guys, uh, our printer here is gonna use 1.75 millimeter filament, which uh, a great majority of the uh, printers out there use. Oh, more candy. <laughs> All right, and then step by step we have, a, oh, I'm so glad they labeled the, ba uh, the uh, bag this way. So, uh, <laughs> melamine or melamine, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that correctly. But uh, that's what these parts uh, are made of. Let's go through here. Okay, I'm going to be very gentle with that one. That is our LCD, which is going to be the screen and the interface. And then we have the electronic board. More of the uh, melamine laser cut parts. And what I'll be doing in my build, and uh, I've got two uh, other friends that just bought this printer as well too, um, we're, we're going to be upgrading to aluminum uh, only because uh, these melamine pressure board, I call it, uh, if you have to loosen it and tighten it back up, it's just, it may come apart on you, kind of like particle board. So I like the idea. I have access to a CNC machine. I like the idea of making these pieces uh, out of aluminum, which is going to be you know, super strong and rigid. And uh, in a 3D printer, we, we want that. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll, that, that'll be another chapter. 
But uh, then we have, this is the extruder bag. We got a couple fans here and a, uh, I can see a, a you can see the print head in there already screwed in. <laughs> so a couple of the fans as well too. So that's that's all in there. All right, moving on. Now this is interesting right here. One of the things that they have, I was hoping you'd have something like this included, but uh, when you're assembling the frame, one part you want to have. Um, 170 millimeters apart, roughly. And I'm willing to bet that's probably what this piece is. To kind of give you an idea exactly, you know, how far to, to adjust those. And then in here is the cable chain for the electronics, the USB, uh, the captain tape. Lots of nice stuff. Get that button back up. And, ah! Uh, Motors, lots of motors. So there were six different motors in there. Uh, based on the weight, I, <laughs> I have no argument with that. And then we have uh, the rails. These are the chrome rods. And then the uh, lead screws. So these are part of the Z axis. And then we have. Uh, I, I gotta give these guys credit. I mean, everything's labeled. This is really, really outstanding. So these are the four by 700 millimeter beams. And then these are the, the short beams. And, you know, just by picking up all these pieces and taking them and putting them on the table, you realize just exactly how massive this printer is gonna be. I love it. Uh, and then we have the mounting. What else we got in here? This was the bag I was worried about. Hardware. Lots and lots of hardware. So this is where all your uh, mounting screws are going to be. Uh, these are the uh, with the uh, T-nuts and all the other pieces that go with the 2020 pieces. Uh, so we're <laughs> going to have to do uh, a little bit of inventory. But we'll move on to the next part here just to make sure we got everything. Uh, we have, I believe, two weeks from delivery to make sure that we have everything and contact them and say, hey, we're missing something. So this is a bag of, there's your pulleys, and then here's the belts. And this is a very well-packed power supply. This is gonna be what powers our beastie here. Come on, come on out. <laughs> well, We'll worry about that later. Hmm. Come on out, buddy. Okay. We'll be doing some creative editing here. <laughs> but there's the, uh, the power supply. Just a quick glance here at everything. Everything looks good. And then. Just checking the light here. What uh, you can use 110 or 220, depending on you know what country you're in. So over here in the United States, we want to make sure it's 110, and uh, just giving that a quick visual that it is uh, slid over to the uh, 110 setting. Not essential to check now, but I just wanted to make sure that it was there. Uh, and then we have a power cord, and that is essentially. What comes in the box? Well, look at all this stuff. Hey guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the bag of hardware. Now, we've already looked through a couple of these bags here. Obviously the extruder has the extruder and it looks like all the parts are in there. Um, but there's a lot of small bits and pieces. Now, I'm not gonna bore you to death on camera and count all the M3 by 30s or what have you. But all I'll do is, like I said, uh, for those of you guys that are waiting for your kit to show up and are just dying to know what's in the box and then inside the bag of tools and, and hardware, uh, we have a ton of stuff here. And looks like there's a, yeah, an end stop piece here. And all right, 
Well, this strikes me as these guys are all pretty much the same size, so I'm not gonna really mess with that bag at all. But uh, at another time off camera, what I'll do is I'll go through these and make sure that we do have all the standoffs and the right screw sizes that we're gonna need. Uh, same goes for in here. Now to make that a little bit easier, one of the things they suggest printing out was this piece right here. And what that does is that allows you to uh, essentially, you know, drop the screw in the appropriate hole and you'll find that exactly, you know, how long it is because uh, everything here is metric. I, I don't know 10 millimeter from 12 millimeter. Um, so this will make the process of sorting these out and making sure you have everything a whole lot easier. The other thing that I have, and I picked this up at Lowe's for 10 bucks, not to promote Lowe's, but you can get it from any hardware store, but uh, bought one of these guys and essentially it's got 17 compartments and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll sort these guys out here and, uh, and throw them in there and uh, that should make the uh, finding the appropriate size screw easier when it's time to uh, put this guy all together. Okay, and one of the other things that I printed out was the these FT5 alignment guides. The, uh, the printer has a, a, a spread there where the uh, uh, horizontal bars go across and then the rest of the printer comes down. Uh, it's, the, it's the amount for the gantry. So one of the uh, things they recommended doing is you want to make sure that's exactly 170 millimeters and a lot of the guys pointing me in the direction of this print and already having two other 3D printers just came in very handy. So what will happen is these will go and, and snap into place and we'll make sure that the, uh, the, uh, the horizontal bars are lined up properly before they're uh, tightened up and put in place. So. There's that. Uh, next step from here is going to be, I am going to um, probably the next day or so, uh, inventory all these bags of uh, goodies. I have some additional items I need to order because uh, I'm probably not going to use the default extruder that came with this. I have uh, I decided I wanna go with a, a E3D uh, Titan extruder and the E3D nozzle. So those will be some accessories I need to buy. So when those show up, those will uh, replace that. And as I mentioned, those uh, uh, melmanite pieces, uh, I'm probably going to replace with aluminum ones. So right now I'm working with uh, some peers about uh, designing some aluminum versions of these uh, melmanite pieces and probably going to uh, work on using those instead of uh, this material, just as a preference. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. I thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll have some more information shortly on the build and how it goes. So just remember, this is where nerdy is cool.